as long as you don't let this guy get past the left tackle or the right tackle, whichever direction you're motioning him before you hike the ball, he'll turn into a blocker. The check and release as well. I find that's the best way to go, especially against man's or blitzes, because if you just do straight up pass blocking, drop back onto deeper coverage where the check and release, and you can see right there, the running back didn't even pick him up. But throwing outside of the circle is how you complete these deeper passes rather than just using the regular classic passing, like I was saying, which will result in a lot of interceptions. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guarantee delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. Defense and passing are probably things that Madden players struggle with the most. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you guys everything you need to know about passing in Madden 24. But before I do, if you guys want to see more tip videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Now, there's a process to playing quarterback in Madden, and the first step of that process is always to read the defense first. A lot of people will come out in something that is a baseline where you really can't see what your opponent is in. So if this is a scenario, a lot of times you'll have to identify as closely as you can and then read it after the snap. But if your opponent isn't in a baseline, I'll give you guys a quick tutorial on how to read a defense so that you don't have to watch the entire video that I already made about reading the defense. It's still going to be helpful, so I'll try to put a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video for that if you want to learn more information because this is probably the most important thing when it comes to playing quarterback. Now, all you really have to look at to read a defense is the cornerbacks on the outside. That's the first step. If they're in a cover two like I am here, your opponent's cornerbacks will be five yards off the line of scrimmage unless they're facing a tight Tight end. Typically when they're facing a tight end or they're closer to the goal line, these rules don't apply. This is only from about the 10 yard line to the 10 yard line on the entire length of the field. Because once the distance gets shorter, it doesn't matter what defense you're in, they're going to play closer to the receivers because there's not as much deep area to cover. So if you see a cornerback five yards off the line of scrimmage, it's a true indicator that's in an immediate cover, uh, cover two every single time. On the other side, though, like I said, you can see that he's against the tight end, so it's not going to look the same. So just keep that in mind. Cornerbacks don't respect the speed of tight ends the same way. They will play closer. That's why he's about three yards off the line of scrimmage. So you typically want to see where the cornerback is on the receiver side in that scenario. Now, if I switch to a cover three, which would be the next one, you'll notice that he switches to about eight yards off the line of scrimmage, where the cornerback on the other side of the field only really drops back about a yard or so. So, like I said, you always want to make sure that you're paying attention to the cornerback in front of the receiver. Eight yards off the line of scrimmage is an easy indicator for cover three and if you have a single high safety like we do here that's once again a very easy indicator for cover three although a lot of times you'll see a cover three where the, one of the safeties will drop down so it'll look like a cover four at the start of the play speaking of cover four i'll show you that next that's going to be very similar as far as eight yards off the line of scrimmage you can see in this play though the cornerback dropped back to the eight yard depth on the tight end side as well, which is also a very good indicator of what we're looking at. Plus you have the two single high safeties, like I said, you don't have a single high safety like cover three we did. You have two safeties deep because they're gonna be covering that area. Now, when it comes to going back to cover three, how do you tell the difference between a cover three and a cover one hole? Typically, it's gonna be based off of something simple like the alignment. Now you can see the cornerbacks change. If I go back to cover three, it's a, he's more concerned. It, this is more about the slot cornerback at this point, but the slot cornerback is more concerned about getting to the area where the curl flat is rather than covering the receiver because he's not covering the receiver. He's covering whoever goes into that area. So if you can see there, he has a little bit of an outside alignment, a little bit of an outside shade. That's going to be a dead giveaway that he's going to cover a zone and not a man. If he's in a man coverage, like if we were to switch to it here, he needs to make sure that he's right in front of the receiver. He's not giving up inside or outside leverage. So that's going to be one of the best indicators when it comes to um, and you can tell us by the outside receivers as well. It just depends on the offensive formation. But that's going to be your best indicator between man and zone. Man coverage defenders do not want to give up any inside or outside leverage because they'll get beat easily to that area if they do that. So they will typically be lined up right in front of the receiver, not shading inside or outside too much. And then last but not least, you have the cover zero, which should be very obvious because safeties a lot of times will be in positions like this where they're doing the exact same thing, where they're trying not to give up inside or outside leverage. And then you see there's really no safeties in the middle of the field. Next up, I'm going to go over protection calls because the second most important thing is making sure that you have enough time for your quarterback to get a pass away. 
To bring up your protection options, you just have to hit the LB or the L1 button, whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation, and it'll give you options with things like Max Protect, Double Team, or Slide Left and Slide Right, and ID the Mic. Now, when it comes to sliding left or sliding right, I feel like that does a pretty good job to pick up a lot of blitzes. You don't have to really get too creative. Uh, but there are going to be blitzes in times where you're going to want to do things like uh, IDing the mic and double teaming, especially if you have a really dominant defensive player like Amika Parsons. I can double team him here. But if it's something like a man zero blitz, which is what probably people will have the most issue with, if your uh, opponent is sending a lot of you know overload blitzes, then that's not going to help because it's going to take two blockers to one guy. But at the end of the day, depending on where a blitz your opponent is sending, you're going to have to try a combination of things like sliding left, sliding right, double teaming, and IDing the mic until you figure out how to pick it up. So make sure that you get familiar with this before you go into games against players that like to blitz a lot. For me, the best way to pick up a lot of blitzes comes from your actual hot route menu, which is going to be your check and releases. So for your running back and your tight end, you'll have a number of check and release options like a block and release cross, a block and release flat, or a delay fade. These are all going to show like this. We're going to have like blue patterns or sometimes red patterns depending on what um, you know the diagram is. I'm not sure why I'm practicing this red, but typically in game it's blue. If you want to pick up something like a, uh, a blitz up the middle, I find it's best to have your target going in that direction. So if I have the tight end doing a check and release over the middle here, he's going to stand up. He's still going to release at some point typically as it took him a while there to release. But you can see how he immediately engaged compared to whether I put him on a check and release flat where he'll probably check and get out a lot faster. Although he's doing a pretty good job of staying in there. But that might be because of Dallas Goddard who has one of the highest pass blocking and run blocking rates. So to me, check and releases are really good. If you do it on a running back, I like the check and release as well. But a lot of times they'll leave before the guy actually gets there. As you can see right there, he actually stuck around. I find that's the best way to go, especially against man's or blitzes because if you just do straight up pass blocking, a lot of times the defender, or most times really the defender that's responsible for these guys will drop back onto deeper coverage where the check and release and you can see right there the running back didn't even pick him up which is another reason why check and releases are better on the last play you saw how the check and release basically picked him up with this guy here doesn't know who he's protecting so this is why another reason why check and releases are much more effective and i've gone over that in the past much more effective than actual run blocking but it also has to do with the pass or the the coverage as well as you can see here the two defenders that are meant to be um you know basically picking up uh those running backs and those tight ends will drop back into deep zones to the point where you're basically going against a cover two man where you have uh the defense has the best of both worlds they now have deep safety coverage taking away the the difficult you know the, the worst part of cover zero and they also have the blitz which is the best part of cover zero well you'll notice if i check and release them both the defenders will stay around the line of scrimmage because eventually they're going to go out on a pattern and they still don't do a very good job of covering it as you can see i still had a wide open pattern there underneath to the running back there is one last option when it comes to pass pro and that's motion blocking receiver if you motion this receiver and hike the ball before he gets outside the tackle box he will turn to a pretty reliable receiving uh, option as far as a blocker which isn't something that you're typically going to see that will get in the way as you can see right here he immediately as long as you don't let this guy get past the left tackle or the right tackle whichever direction you're motioning him before you hike the ball he'll turn to a blocker as you can see right here he picks up mika parsons relatively well to allow me to get a really quick and easy pass out and now you can see how all six of these uh, blitzers are all picked up next up i'm going to go over how to survive in the pocket now there's always a weak link to your offensive line and in this particular scenario with the eagles it's going to be my right guard in cam jurgens as he's not very highly rated and he's not very strong against the pass rush so a lot of times you'll see this defensive player will get a dominant pass rush win where he might just get outside of him right away like he does here or he might push him back if it's a superstar player he might just blow right through him to a lot of points where you really have to adjust as your quarterback to make sure that he gets back into a better position to help you out so on the left side here it looks like they're pretty much holding down the the left pretty well but i have to worry about how cam jurgens is getting beat to the edge because if he continues to get around he's going to get to the quarterback so it's really simple. When you are trying to survive in the pocket, it's a lot like when you're running the football. You really have to create an angle where you put that lineman back in between you and the defensive player. So if I step up here, you can see I can step up enough that Cam Jurgens can get back into the play and re-engage. And it's really that simple. As you can see, if I would have sat back in that pocket, he would be in my ear already. This same concept of reading your blocks when moving around the pocket applies to when you want to exit the pocket. As you'll see on the left side here with Mika Parsons, that once I start the replay, 
play, he immediately gets outside leverage. Meaning if I try to roll in that direction, he's probably gonna get me for a sack for a big loss. But if you look on the other side, Demarcus Lawrence, for whatever reason, tries to do a spin move and he's gonna end up with inside leverage, meaning that I can immediately run to the outside because my right tackle is now walling off that block. So if you see that, if you read your blocks, like I said, once again, just like you would if you're in a running play, you know that you can immediately go to the outside because he has that edge. And now I can run outside of the pocket and buy much more time that way. Now the next step has nothing really to do with the functions of the game. You just have to have a plan before you start a play. That's the whole purpose of reading the defense, making your adjustments. You wanna know where you wanna go with the ball before the ball snaps. Because if you have to make that decision in the moment, you're most likely gonna make a mistake. So if I know my opponent is in what looks like a cover three here, I know that there's going to be certain areas that are going to be open and not going to be open. I can immediately eliminate the X receiver. That's not going to get open. I know that that's not going to do anything but pull back coverage. So I know in a scenario like this that my best you know, routes are probably going to be the drags. If they're not open, then I can hit the B receiver if the, if the linebacker clears. Or I also know in a play like this that I can most likely just throw it to the running back underneath for a quick check down, check and release. I just have to make a plan before the play starts. And last but not least, we're gonna go over the actual passing mechanics before we go over the catching mechanics. And one of the most important things to do is to make sure that you're trying to at least learn placement and power. If you're still in classic passing, you're not gonna be able to complete a lot of deep balls because you really don't have as much control as is required in the game today to complete a lot of deep balls. Now, this game is still set up for classic passing, and if you just throw the ball while moving the left stick, you're gonna see how the ball still stays inside of the circle, which is really gonna result in a lot of knockdowns and interceptions. In today's game, you really have to use the left trigger as well and get that ball outside of the circle to make sure that the defender doesn't have a chance to the ball, but the receiver does. So throwing outside of the circle is how you complete these deeper passes passes rather than just using the regular classic passing like I was saying which will result in a lot of interceptions after that you really just have to know what type of pass to do I would say that the bullet pass is probably the most consistent as far as getting the ball quickly to the receiver especially when you're throwing short against things like zone coverages especially but there will be scenarios where throwing to the uh, running back especially on this play here is going to require a lob pass where that's going to be tapping the button to the point where it stays in the air as long as possible. Lob passes come in handy the most against man coverages like this, where there's no safety over the top, which is why you're gonna wanna get that ball up there as long as possible. But if there was a safety over the top, they're typically gonna make a play on it. So this really only comes in handy when facing things like man zero or man cover one, like we're looking at here. After that, it's really important to know what type of catch to make as that catch on the last play was a rack catch, making it a lot easier for me to catch and run up the field to the point where I get an easy catch and one play touchdown against his defense. To do that, you just have to hit the X button if you're on Xbox or the square button if you're on PlayStation. That's gonna be any scenario where you really don't have anybody behind that defender. As you can see right there, I get another rack catch. I don't slow down. I keep running through the ball, I accelerate for the best catch and run that I can get. There will be times though, where you're gonna wanna basically do a safe catch because there's traffic. And you can see right there, I get the ball knocked out because I didn't throw the ball fast enough or I didn't catch the ball in a certain way. So to do that, you're gonna wanna get down by hitting the A button and you'll basically catch the ball and try to protect the ball and go to the ground. Hitting that same safe catch button can be very helpful when it comes to completing passes close to the sideline as it'll often result in a toe drag animation or if you're not in too close, they'll also just get down to make sure that they don't you know, drop the ball or go out of bounds. So to me, safe catching is probably one of the best ways to go. And then last but not least, we have the aggressive catch, which is wire triangle. If you're ever in a position where you have to make a user adjustment to try to get the ball, like right here where Diggs has underneath shade, and I really don't have much of an opportunity with a safe catch or a rat catch, you're gonna wanna do an aggressive catch. You're gonna wanna come back to the ball and try to high point it by hitting wire triangle, which will give you the best opportunity to hang on to that ball in contact and make a play. But if you're ever going to catch a ball, no matter what type of ball you catch, always tap the button. You can hear my controller in the background as I'm constantly tapping the X button to make sure that I time that rack catch. This is because Madden typically has a penalty 
when it comes to um, a timing the catch. If you don't time the catch properly, you will get drops. So don't try to time it at all. Just tap the button repeatedly and it removes any timing penalties. So I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys wanna see more tips about passing or more tips about how to read and beat every defense like I mentioned earlier, I'll have videos to that popping up on screen. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching and wish it out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.